Hi everyone, it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. It's that time of month again when I get to make cards with the Stamps of Life January 2021 card kit. And this kit is so much fun and you'll see why as we go through the contents of the kit. Now before we get started with this card tutorial, go ahead and click that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber and turn on your bell notification so that you'll be notified every time I release a new video. So in this card kit, let me tell you, it's full of so much stuff. Number one, you get this free tote bag that Stephanie gave to all the card kit members this month. It's a Stamps of Life. It's a pretty large tote bag that you can use for going to scrapbooking events, going to the grocery store, wherever you might go. So here's the cardstock palette colors for this month. So we have the sunshine, the blueberry, the blue jay, the grape, cloud, sky, poppy, kiwi, and you always get four sheets of the powdered sugar cardstock. So there's the color palette and it matches the pattern paper pad. Now look at this pattern paper pad. It is six by nine inches. This is the first time that the Stamps of Life has made a paper pad so large and it's great for using the pattern paper to make your slimline cards. And this paper pad includes four sheets of these fish tanks, as well as all of the fish that you see there. So you can use your matching dies. So you have your fish tank to stamp dies and your more for fish tank dies. So if you are in the Die Hard Club, you already have those. If not, they are a separate purchase and you can use the shadow dies to die cut those out. But if you don't have the dies and don't want to invest in the dies, you can always use your scissors and just fussy cut those images which make for such quick and easy cards because they're already colored for you you don't have to worry about doing any coloring so there are 24 sheets in this paper pad and you get two of each design and let me tell you that because the paper pad is so much bigger you get more paper and it's really awesome because you can make more cards with it you also get this idea sheet which gives you some ideas for making your cards and these white epoxy dots also included are these yellow bows with white polka dots you also get a word die that says loving life and it's the letters plus the shadow you also get this stamp set. It has two fish on it, as well as sentiments that say, you are so cool, and I'm so lucky to have a friend like you. And in my kit, I actually did not use these fish stamps because there were so many die cuts that I was able to use, so I didn't want to have to worry about stamping and coloring. You also get those matching dies to cut them out, and you get a sheet of fish puffy stickers as well as two rolls of ribbon. One is a blue, it's a, it's a pretty thick, almost like a leather, but it's not leather. And then another one is a gray ribbon and you also get a set of envelopes. So once again, here are all the goodies that you get in your Stamps of Life January 2021 card kit and I had so much fun playing with this kit. I did make 10 cards and you will see my design process for all of these cards now. So I started off by taking the four sheets of die cuts and I took my shadow dies and I'm going to die cut all of these little fish and all of the fish tank using my shadow dies. And again, if you don't have your shadow dies, you can always take your scissors and fussy cut these out. These make for such quick and easy cards. So in total, you have 60 die cuts total, 28 fish, 8 starfish, 8 seaweed, 6 turtles, and 10 fish tanks. So for card one... I will be making a slimline card. I have been waiting for the Stamps of Life to come up with these larger paper pads so that I can use them on slimline cards. So I'm so excited to make one. So I am gonna be making a few slimline cards in this video. So here's my first one using the triple circle drop-in die set. In order to do, use this die set, you will need the layering, the long layering rectangle die that comes with the slimline card die set in order to cut this out of your paper. So you're just going to layer the drop-in inside of the rectangle 
and add some washi tape and run it through your die cutting machine and then when you remove that just be careful removing the washi tape and that cuts out a large um, panel for your slimline card and it has the three circles and I thought these circles were perfect for a fish type card. Now the circles there, those three circles there, you can if you wanted to flip them over and use the reverse on the inside of that panel but I'm not going to do that. Instead I chose to use a polka dot paper so I'm going to take the large rectangle that came with the slimline card die set and cut that out now, if you don't have this particular slimline um, drop-in, you can still recreate this card. And to do that, you can just cut your striped layer at eight and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then the circles, you can use like two inch circles and just kind of center them in a row and die cut that out. And then you can cut your polka dot layer to eight and a quarter by three and a quarter, which would be the same size as the top layering piece with the stripes. And when you layer those both on, they would be the same exact size. And that's what I'm doing now. So I'm just taking that top layering piece, adding some glue. I'm not coming too far in on the edges of those circles because I am going to stick some seaweed in underneath those circles. So I just wanted to make sure they weren't fully glued down and then you can see how both of those pieces layer together because they were cut with the same die and if you didn't have the dies they would be cut to the same measurement and if for some reason you don't get it exactly on right you can just use your paper trimmer or some scissors just to snip off the ends if you happen to see any polka dot paper peering through um, underneath so next I'm just going to take some of the fish and the seaweed and position it where I want it inside these circles. I am going to have the two circles on the ends on the left and right with the die cut pieces and then the circle in the middle I'm just going to leave empty because I am going to stamp a sentiment in there. And I really like how the white in the polka dot paper, it actually blends in with the white edges of the die cuts. Some of the cards that I create in this video, I will actually come in with my scissors and just snip away some of that extra white because I felt like it was maybe too much white. Um, but for this card, it blended in nicely. So here it says, you are officially awesome. And that stamp is from the More Fish Tank to Stamp stamp set. So here I took a piece of powdered sugar cardstock and I cut the card base out of the large card base die from the Slimline Card die set. If you don't have that die set, you can just take a piece of powdered sugar cardstock, cut it down to eight and a half by seven and score at three and a half inches to get your card base. And then that blue layer is the from the blueberry paper and it is eight and three eighths by three and three eighths. So I'm just layering the striped piece on the blueberry and then the blueberry layer onto the card base. And then just adding some epoxy dots to finish up this card and that will complete this card. I just love how it turned out. For my next card, I am making another slimline card, only this one I'm not using any dies. And I'm actually going to be cutting down some pattern paper and just kind of making this into sections. So the blueberry layer is eight and three eighths by three and three eighths. The striped piece is five and a half by three and a quarter. The green starfish pattern paper is two and three quarters by three and a quarter and that was just left over from the previous card. So you can see how I'm layering these up on that blueberry layer. And then I'm taking the blue cord ribbon. I don't even know what it's called, but I'm taking it, I'm just cutting it to size. Now, normally I would flip the ribbon over underneath the panel, but because it's so thick, I didn't want to add any extra dimension underneath that when I layered onto my card base. So I added some glue between where the pattern paper meets, and then I just added the ribbon there, and then I'm just going to flip this over and then just trim off the excess. So it just adds a little bit of dimension and something extra between those layers. I am going to be adding some double-sided adhesive foam to the back of the fish tank because I want to pop that up on the larger panel on this card. 
So that fits perfectly inside that panel. And then I'm going to be using the Loving Life Word Dye. I die cut the shadow layer out of the Powdered Sugar cardstock and the words out of the Blueberry cardstock. And you can see how those are individual letters. I did make sure I had double-sided adhesive on the back of that Blueberry cardstock before running it through my die cut machine. And here I wanted to separate it because the whole word, both words together, would not fit. So I just cut it down the middle, trimmed it off, and then using it here on the left-hand side of this panel as two separate die cut pieces. I do add a puffy sticker, a couple puffy stickers to the fish tank just to add some more dimension. And then I take the little bubbles from the fish tank to stamp and add some fish bubbles in there. And here I'm just showing you how you can cut your slimline card base. So you can take your cardstock, cut it down to seven inches on the 11 inch side. So just cut it there at seven inches. And then you're gonna take the large piece and you're going to score it at three and a half. And when you score it at three and a half and fold that cardstock, you have your slimline card base. So here I'm just going to add that entire layer onto that slimline card base. Now I do want to mention that that slimline card die set that includes the large card base to die cut your card base, you need a larger machine for that. And not everybody has a larger die cutting machine. So this is how you would make a card base without the larger machine. So moving on to card three, I am going to be making a five by seven card using the brand new five by seven striped card die set from the Stamps of Life. I cut the card base die out of the grape card stock and then I took the smaller layering die and cut it out of the starfish yellow pattern paper. There's also a larger layering die which I end up cutting out of some white card stock which you'll see that later. And then here I'm just folding at the score line to create my card base. Now if you don't have this die set you can still make a 5x7 card. So for the card base you would take your um, grape card stock eight and a half by 11, you'd cut it down to seven by 10 inches and score at five inches for your card base. And then for your layer, you would cut that to four and five eighths by six and five eighths. And that would be the yellow starfish pattern paper layer. And then the other layer that I cut out of white, which you'll see later, you would just cut that down to four and three quarters by six and three quarters. So you saw me just trim down the white off of the fish tank and I also am going to end up trimming those fish because I don't want so much white on the ends of them. I am bringing in the letters from the solid alphabet die set from the Stamps of Life and I did die cut in poppy cardstock the words Thank you. There is a sentiment in the fish tank to stamp stamp set that is says thank you. And I figured I would, instead of using the sentiment on this card, I had so much room because it's a five by seven that I thought it would be cute to add the die cut words instead of using a stamped sentiment. So I do want to make sure that those letters are a little bit wonky. They're not straight. That was the look I was going for. So if you're wondering why they're not straight, that was intentional. So you can see how I put the fish behind the Y in the word U and then the turtle was kind of put through the letter U. So that one of the reasons why I wanted to trim off some of the excess white is because if you look at that seahorse that I just put in the letter N, there was so much white extending beyond that seahorse that it was taking away from the actual letter. And I wanted more of that letter to show than, than more of the white on the end of the fish. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of these letters. I also need to mention that scalloped border that I cut out underneath the fish tank. That was from a previous Stamps of Life card kit and it's not for sale currently on their website. So if you have been a card kit member, you have that die. And then I'm just gonna add some of the, actually I think I add just one fish and then some of the bubbles from the stamp set. And you can see I add them there to the actual card where the letters are as well. I think that turned out super cute. So here's where I die cut that a larger layering piece from the five by seven card die set out of the white. And again, if you don't have that, it's four and three quarters by six and three quarters. So I'm just layering the thank you on top of that. And then I'll layer that entire piece onto the grape card base. So that's going to complete this card. 
So for my next card, I'm using a piece of the poppy cardstock, and that is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then that starfish green paper I cut with a stitched rectangle die. And if you don't have a stitched rectangle die, you can always cut your paper to five and a quarter by four. And I'm going to be using the Loving Life Word Die, but notice that I just kind of centered it at the bottom, and I'm running that entire layer through the die cut machine because look at what it the, that die cut does to that paper. It actually cuts the letters out of the paper, but you can actually see the letters beautifully through that poppy cardstock. So I'm just cutting that into the paper and then I'm saving that O to piece back in. So I'm going to add that layer to the poppy cardstock layer, making sure I do get glue, for example, inside that G, some of those pieces to make sure they lay flat. I did add the fish tank above and here I'm piecing in the letter O and I'm going to add some of that um, blue ribbon just like I did with the previous card. I'm just cutting two strips. I'm going to be using two strips here and I'm this time I'm actually adding the glue to the actual ribbon itself and then I'm going to add that to the card. And again I'm going to let it extend beyond the edges because I will trim that off. I don't want to curl it up underneath that layer because it would be too thick to add to a card base. So here I'm just making sure it's straight, pressing that down, and I'm gonna do the same thing to a second piece of that ribbon. So I'm just gonna add some glue. And then once I have that glue added, I'm going to flip that over and then press it down onto the card front. And then I'll be able to trim off the excess ribbon on both sides. And here I'm just going to trim up the starfish. I'm actually going to include two starfish, one on each side of the loving life. And then just add glue there and put one there on the left and right side. And then I'm going to add a couple of the puffy sticker fish to the inside of that fish tank. And I will be adding some of the circle, the little bubbles for the fish. So I add a couple and then I'm going to add that to a white card base. And actually this card base was just a pre-cut card base that I picked up at a local craft store because I'm trying to save some of my powdered sugar cardstock because that's such good high quality cardstock and I, I don't want to use it for too many card bases. So here for this next card I am going to be following a sketch and the sketch I'm going to be following is the OWH sketch 26 which you see there on the table. So I have a piece of Blue Jay cardstock cut to four and a quarter by five and a half and then I have a the Loving Life paper which is five by three and three quarters. I die cut the Loving Life word die. The shadow layer is out of the cloud card stock and then the top layering letters are out of the poppy card stock. Again, making sure to have double-sided adhesive on the back of the poppy card stock before running that die through the die cut machine. And that gray starfish strip is five and a half by one and a half. And that's gonna layer right underneath the fish tank. So here I'm just adding some double-sided adhesive foam on the back of the fish tank die cut just to pop that up and give that some more dimension on my card. And then that will layer right on top of that strip right in the middle. So that entire card layer will go on an A2 size card base, which measures four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I took a piece of the gray ribbon, tied it in a bow, and I'm just adding it with some hot glue to the end of the fish tank. And that completes this card. For my next card, I'm going to be using the Mojo Monday Sketch 533, and I have several layers of cardstock. And before I talk about the layers, I want you to look at the card sketch on the table and notice that it is in a portrait view. However, I am actually making my card a landscape card. These measurements will be in my blog, so you can go down to the description box and find a link to my blog. 
lisamearscarddesigns.com and you'll be able to see it there but the actual coordinating um, blog post will be linked down below. So the kiwi strip that's behind the fish tank that is two by three and a half and then the white layer underneath that is two and one eighths by three and five eighths. The polka dot strip is five and one quarter by one and an eighth and that's layered onto a piece of white cardstock that measures five and a quarter by one and a quarter. Okay, and that will be layered right on top of that um, kiwi vertical strip. Now the large starfish purple paper in the background, that is measured five and a quarter by four. Now I want you to notice here, I'm adding some extra cardstock underneath, just the um, just on the sides, on the right side and on the left side, because otherwise this strip is not going to lay flat. There's so many layers of cardstock underneath or pattern paper underneath that it was not going to lay flat. So by thickening up the cardstock and putting some just some scraps underneath, it will help it to lay flat. So the only part I didn't add the extra cardstock was the part that lays on top of the green starfish paper. So hopefully that makes sense. So here I decided I was going to stamp a sentiment inside the fish tank. So I'm stamping the Hey You, and that is from the More Fish Tank to Stamp. And I am going to add some cardstock scraps underneath the fish tank because, again, now we're talking about four layers of cardstock underneath it. So we need to add some of that just extra scraps there just to make sure that that fish tank is even and it lays flat on my card front. So that entire layer is going to go on a piece of kiwi cardstock that measures five and three eighths by four and an eighth. So I'm going to take one of my A2 size card bases in white and just add a sentiment on the inside. I fish you a great birthday and add one of the fish from the die cut pieces from the paper pad there. And of course I have to add the little bubbles for the fish. So I add that entire layer onto the card base and that will complete this card. For my next card, I'm going to be making a shaker card using some scalloped rectangle dies. I'm using the largest die in the scalloped rectangle die set from the Stamps of Life. That's the outside die that you see there. And then the middle die is the third largest in the set. So I'm just layering those up with some washi tape. I die cut it out of the sky cardstock and it cuts out a frame. So the piece in the middle, I don't need. I'm only gonna be using the frame. So here I'm just using my ruler to measure how wide this frame is so that I know how big of a piece of pattern paper I need to cut. So along the long edge of the fish paper, I'm cutting it down to three and a half, and then I just flip that over, and I cut that to four and three quarters. And that's the paper that's gonna layer underneath that scalloped frame. So here I'm just going to place that on a piece of the sunshine cardstock. And that sunshine cardstock was cut down to four and one eighth by five and three eighths. So just add that there, the fish paper right on top, making sure that it is centered on there so that it doesn't um, you know, peek out of the blue frame. And then I'm going to take a piece of acetate and just trim it down. Now if you wanted to cut it down, you can do that. If you wanted to cut it with your paper trimmer, you can do that. But I just thought it was easier just to kind of rest the acetate on top of the um, scalloped piece and then just trim it with my scissors. And then just add some glue where that acetate is going to go and then just lay the acetate directly on top of the glue. And then I'm just gonna take some double-sided adhesive foam and I'm just gonna trim it down and then add that foam as a frame around the rectangle frame. So when you're adding your foam, you want to make sure that 
all of the foam is connected and there's no open spaces because if you have any open spaces, the shaker bits will fall out between the holes. This foam is double sided so I'm just peeling back the bottom layer and adding it there to the rectangle and keeping the top um, covering piece on top until I'm ready to remove it. So here I just want to make sure that my shaker bits have enough room in here to shake and I don't need to add another layer of foam because if I do this is the time to do it rather than waiting till I've already added it and realizing that they don't shake inside. So I'm actually using sequins, which are pretty thin, so I did not need to add another layer of foam to my shaker um, card. So I'm just adding the sequins directly on top of that pattern paper, and then I'm going to remove the double-sided adhesive backing, and then just add that scalloped rectangle to the top to secure those shaker bits. I am using a happy birthday die. This was from a previous card kit. I don't know which one. And I decided I wanted to use this die because I make more birthday cards than anything. So I wanted to turn this into a birthday card. And I die cut the letters out of the poppy and the shadow out of the powdered sugar and just add that there to the bottom right hand corner. And I'm just making sure that that shaker element is just pressed down real snug against that card base. I do add some sequins to the top of this card just for some extra embellishment. So just adding them there with some of the glue. And then I'm going to add some hot glue and just add a ribbon to the top left hand corner of that card. And that completes the shaker card. So for my next card, I am going to be using a border die to die cut a piece of the ginger snap cardstock. I also have a circle die and a scalloped circle die that I die cut out poppy as well as the blue jay pattern paper. I also have a piece of poppy cardstock that measures four and a quarter by five and a half. And the poppy cardstock in this card was actually from my stash because I ran out by this point. And then I have a blue jay layer which measures four and an eighth by five and three eighths. So here with the border, I am just inking up the edges with some ginger snap and just putting some ginger snap there on the top. This is going to be sand. I'm going to be creating a little scene inside the circle. And then I go to my island to visit stamp set and take out the sand stamp and just tap it there on some chocolate ink and then just tap it there on the border. So I'm just making it look like sand and if you don't have the sand stamp you can always use a marker and do little dots with a um, brown marker to make this look like sand. So I'm just going to add some glue to the bottom of this circle and I'm going to add that border there and any part that's extending off the edges of that circle will just be trimmed off. So I did die cut some of the seaweed from the fish tank to stamp dies. I didn't want to use the die cut pieces because I didn't want all that extra white around the seaweed. So I just chose to use the dies and die cut them out of the kiwi cardstock. I did put double sided adhesive on the back of that cardstock before running it through the die cut machine and I die cut three of the seaweed there and then added them to the um, circle. I did tuck the seaweed behind that sand as well. So when you're adding your sand, just make sure you don't put glue all the way to the top edge. So that way you have room to tuck behind. I also trimmed off some of the extra white around these die cuts because I didn't want so much white showing. And then just added some die cuts there to the circle and adding the little bubbles with the stamp. Notice that this one, I didn't stamp the whole thing out correctly. So I'm just taking a black marker and just filling in those circles. And then I'm going to add that circle to the scalloped circle. And that's a 3 and 3 8 inch circle. And then the scallop is a 4 inch scallop. So here I'm just going to add the layers together. And again, these measurements will be in my blog. So if you need to go back and look at the measurements, you can head over to my blog and check that out. So I add the fish paper, the fish paper is four by five and a quarter, add that to the blue jay layer, and then add that layer to the poppy layer. And all of that's going to end up going on a white A2 size card base. Okay, so here I stamped out, I fish you a great birthday onto some white cardstock, 
and then I'm just layering that up with some poppy cardstock and I just use my scissors just to trim it, trim it down into a rectangle or you can use your paper trimmer and then I'm just going to add the scallop at the top of the card and then add the sentiment towards the bottom. I am going to be bringing in some twine just wrapping it around that layer so I just wrap it around a couple times and I will be tying it in a bow and the bow is going to be positioned there off to the left. I am going to bring in a glue dot and just secure that bow to the card with a glue dot. And then that layer will be added to a white card base and then that will complete this card. For my next card, I'm going to be using the Circle Background A2 die set. And I am layering up the two pieces that come in that die set. So you have your large rectangle on the outside and then the background die on the inside. Die cutting that out of some sunshine paper to give you your background die. And then I'm taking the large rectangle piece and die cutting that out of some pattern paper and that's going to be in the background. So I'm going to have all these little fish coming out of the holes. So that seahorse, I actually have to tape down. It's a little bit larger than the hole that I'm going to be using. So I tape it down in the back and then I add the glue to the entire back side of this background die. And then I just add the background die to the pattern paper and it will layer on perfectly because it was cut with the same rectangle die. So here I'm just adding some of the fish into the holes. I do stamp a sentiment, you're so cool. This is from the card kit. I just stamped it with some licorice ink from the Stamps of Life and then I'm just trimming it down into a rectangle. And that's going to be adhered toward the bottom left hand corner. I am gonna be bringing in the castle from the puffy stickers. So I'm just going to kind of layer that sentiment underneath the castle. And I am going to bring in some of the seaweed. I get, again, just like in one of the previous cards, I die cut the seaweed out of the fish tank to stamp dies. And I die cut several of the seaweed, uh, seaweed out of the kiwi cardstock. I tuck the seaweed behind the sentiment. And then I also decide that it will look really cute if I put some of the seaweed coming out of the holes in the background. So I do that for a few. And you can see, like with the fish up at the top left-hand corner, how the seaweed is kind of in front of the fish. I thought that was super cute. And then I add that background piece to a piece of sky cardstock that measures 4 and an eighth by 5 and 3 eighths. And then that's layered onto an A2 size card base my last card I'm making another slimline card using the collage slimline drop-in which is very similar to card one when I use the circle drop-in so you use it the same way so you layer up the collage drop-in inside of a large rectangular drop-in um, and that rectangular die is from the slimline card die set from the stamps of life and I'm die cutting it out of the loving life pattern paper and then the large rectangle slimline card layering piece is going to be die cut out of this poppy um, starfish pattern paper. And then part of the dies in the drop-in die set includes this square and it's for the middle piece which I die cut a piece of white card stock and I put a sentiment in there. That sentiment is from the card kit. And instead of putting that in the shape of a square, I decided to put it in the shape of a diamond. One of the reasons was because that stamp set did not fit if I would have put it in a square shape. But I really like the shape of the diamond because it gives me, it shows more pattern paper on the edges, which I really like. So I'm just going to create a couple little scenes in each one of these squares. Um, or I should say rectangles because the top and bottom one are rectangles. And then I'm just using the puffy stickers. So no die cuts, all puffy stickers. I add the castle there at the bottom. And I add some of the fish. And I'm going to add some of the seaweed. And the seaweed I die cut out of the kiwi cardstock using that seaweed die from the fish tank to stamp dies. And I'm also going to bring in some of the little rocks and these rocks are so tiny but there are a couple of dies in that same die set and I die cut them out of some cloud cardstock and just added a couple rocks next to the seaweed in some of the squares. 
So then I'm just going to add that entire layer onto a piece of kiwi cardstock that measures 3 and 3 eighths by 8 and 3 eighths. And then that's going to be layered onto my slimline card um, base. And that will complete this card. So here's a look at all 10 cards that I made with the Stamps of Life January 2021 card kit. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which one was your favorite. And if you liked this video, please give it a like and be sure to subscribe for more card making tutorials from me. Also follow me on Facebook at Lisa Mears Card Designs and on my Instagram and Pinterest. So thanks so much for watching everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.